Hello and welcome to my video on dividing rational numbers. So first we're going to start looking at fractions. There are three simple steps just like multiplying fractions, uh, but they're just slightly different, so follow along carefully. Um, first thing is the exact same step as multi multiplying fractions. So hopefully uh, you remember this step and hopefully you remember this little chart that we made uh, last video. First step is find the sign. Is it positive or negative? So first number, what number is it? Second number, what number is it? And then what the answer is. So in this case here, we have a positive first number and negative second number. So we'd look for one that has positive, negative. So therefore our answer is negative. We'd write that down. Then we put our, our fractional line there. And then what we do, um, so now that we know that, that sign, now we can, sorry, we won't put that fractional line. Now we'll put everything else in brackets, and we will deal with everything else in a second. So that's step one, done. Step two says, make them common denominators. Now this is going back to uh, topic 3.2 and 3.4, which is adding and subtracting uh, rational numbers or fractions. Um, so c making common denominators, if you're confused, look back at those videos as well. They would help you. Um, but to make common denominators, you take the number at the bottom, the denominator, it's the bottom number, you multiply it by both the top and the bottom on the other side, and then you take the bottom number on the other side, you multiply it by both the top and the bottom on that side. So, if we do that, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 5 is 15, then we have to have our lovely dividing symbol between the two fractions, and then dark blue, 5 times 1 is 1, 5 times 3 is 15. Good. We're one step closer, so let's make that a, I don't know, a green check mark. And then, let's see, do we have like an orange? We do have an orange or a purple. Oh, well, whatever. I chose orange. Is that going to be readable? Yeah, it will be. Okay. And then the last step says divide the numerators or the top numbers. Okay, so the top numbers, let's put an equal sign here. Top numbers are the 9 divided by the 1. So what we do is we now scribble out this bottom part and we imagine it's not even there. So 9 divided by 1, what is that? Well, actually in this case it's nice and easy. It equals uh, 9, but in most cases the numbers won't work out so we'd have 9 over 1. But we can't forget if we had a positive or a negative, we can't forget to put that there. Now negative 9 over 1. In this case, it simplifies to negative 9. All right, and that is our answer. So either one of those two would be our answer. Okay, awesome. We got that one. But what if, what if we're given a number that is no longer just a beautiful fraction, uh, but it's this mixed number? What can we do? Well, to work with it, we usually We'll just do one step first, okay? So sometimes there's a step ahead of this one. Let's call it uh, let's call it a blue step. So the step ahead of this one. Sometimes, if there's a mixed fraction, we'll make make it into make him proper. Okay, if, if necessary, there's one extra step. So to make it improper, um, again, this is shown in the, I believe, the subtracting video, 3.3. Um, so watch carefully. I'm going to do it again here. So here we have negative 1, uh, 3 over 4. So what we're going to do to make this improper is we're going to multiply the 1 and the 4. Okay? So we're still going to be over 4, still going to be negative, but now we're going to multiply the, whatever the numbers in front times the denominator, 
so 1 times 4, and then we'll add to that the 3. Okay, and then negative is out in front, in total front. Okay, and we're going to do the same thing for the next one, so uh, watch carefully. Uh, so divided by, keep that the same. Um, so divided by, it's out of 3. First one that we're going to have is 2 times 3. Because there's 2 out in front and the 3 at the bottom. Plus the 1 that was there before. Okay, so now if we do that, we're going to have 4 times 1 plus 3 is 7 over 4. Don't forget the negative in front. Divided by 2 times 3 is 6 plus 1 is 7 over 3. Okay, now we have improper fractions. Now we can do the same, same steps as before. Negative and plus. Uh, negative, then plus. Okay? So our answer is going to be negative. Ignore that. From now on, our answer is going to be negative. Don't forget that at the end. Okay. So, uh, let's see. That's a check mark there. So let's do another second check mark. Find the sign. It's negative. Boom. Negative. Green. Step two, make the co them common denominators. The bottom number is the same. So, same, same thing as before. Multiplying this across to here. Multiplying, uh, let's use black, this across to here. Um, to, to both sides, to the top and the bottom. Don't forget, top and the bottom. So if I do that, we've got uh, 7 times 3 is 21, and then uh, 3 times, so it's a neg, yeah, don't worry about the negative right now, 21, and then 3 times 4 is 12, divided by, whoopsies, typed somewhere, but I don't know where, um, and then 4 times 7 is 28, <laughs> And then 4 times 3 is 12. Okay, so this number is now common denominator. Good. Uh, last step here says divide the numerators, uh, which are the top numbers. So divide the top numbers. And don't forget this negative that we pulled out before. Okay? Divide the top numbers. Well, top number is 21 divided by 28. And that is our final answer. <laughs> okay, so hopefully those fractions help you. And now we're going to move on to decimals. Decimals are very, very similar to multiplying decimals, so the same sort of steps. Okay, the first one is really easy. Estimate the answer. Okay, so what if this was uh, negative 2 divided by negative 1? What would our answer be? Well, there's a negative and a negative, so if we're remembering our chart over here, negative and a negative gets us a positive answer. Okay, so our answer would be positive, and 2 Divided by 1 is 2. So plus 2. Or just 2. Okay, so our answer is going to be very close to 2. Let's estimate. Find an answer without decimals. So what if we had negative 24 divided by negative 8? And remembering that negatives. Uh, there's two of them, so it's going to be a positive answer. So 24 divided by 8. Hopefully, you know your division or your times tables, which gives you this. So the answer would be 3. So our answer is going to be really close to 3. Then, uh, or it is, it's going to be, yeah, it's going to be 3. And then you have to compare it to find the right answer. Is it closer to 3 when I go 3.0? 
or closer to the 2 if I go 3.0, or is it closer to the 2 if I go 0 0.3? Definitely if the 3 is in the 1's place. So that's how we find out the right answer. So uh, let's go with this is screen, and let's go with this being the third step. Okay, so that's one quick example of us doing it. Now let's do a little bit more of a difficult one. One that takes a little bit of like almost long division. Okay. Yeah, actually long division if you don't remember how to do it. So step one, estimate the right answer. So this is close to, but not exactly, one, well maybe go above, one divided by negative uh, 0 0.5, because that's an easy answer to get. That would give us, it's a plus and a negative, so it would be a negative answer, and it would be a negative 2. How many times can we fit a half into 1? Well, two halves make a 1, so 2 times. But it's a negative number, so negative 2. Okay, so that's our estimated answer. Find answer without decimals. So if I had... 125 divided by negative uh, negative 5, what would the answer be? Okay, well we know the negative, it would be an, a negative answer, right? But if you don't remember how to do long division, here's your chance to, to uh, remember. So, this is how I do it. I look at the 1. Can 5 fit into the 1? No. Can it fit into 12? Yes. So I'm going to be writing my number here. How many times does it fit into 12? Two times. Fit it in twice. It's like 10. Okay, so 12 minus 10. Then I just add that 0 to give me 25. Okay, so I've got 2 out there, and I've got 25 down here. Now 25 divided by 5, hopefully you know, is... is uh, going to be another 5. Okay, so our answer is 25, or negative 25. Okay, so compared to negative 2, is negative 25 closer, negative 2.5, or negative 0 0.25? What is the closest to that? Well, definitely, definitely negative 2.5. So that is the right answer. So hopefully uh, those examples help you out with dividing rational numbers.